Welcome to another Little Green Workshops video tutorial. This time it's Colby. And the ingredients are 8 litres of full cream milk, 5 drops of annatto colouring diluted in quarter a cup of unchlorinated water, 1 eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, uh, M030 and 31, and 1 teaspoon of liquid rennet diluted in quarter of a cup of unchlorinated water, two tablespoons of cheese salt and one eighth of a teaspoon of calcium chloride if you're using homogenized milk and dilute that in a quarter of a cup of water. There's all the ingredients, they're all lined up ready to go, all measured up already, as well as the other utensils, the colander, the sterilized cheese cloth, the cheese press and the curd cutter. And I'm just putting the finishing touches. We're putting the last of the milk in. I'm using a non-homogenized milk today. And this is a very good milk because it sets a really good curd. So it's got a little bit of cream on top. That uh, This is called a cream line milk. So I'm just whisking that into the milk, making sure it's all mixed thoroughly. And the cream's all in. There's the mesophilic culture. It's a powder, direct set. So we're putting in a heap smidgen, which is about one eighth of a teaspoon. And we let that sit on top for a little while to rehydrate. And then we're gonna stir it in after about a minute. So the target temperature at this stage is 30 degrees Celsius, which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're just stirring in the mesophilic culture now. And we're gonna let that sit. And we're gonna let the culture do its work for one hour. So that's going to ripen the milk, that's going to change the acidity of the milk. So an hour later, we get to add the other ingredients to the milk. So just check the temperature, make sure it hasn't gone up. And the heat was off during the one hour of ripening. And we're going to add the annatto colouring, now you can see that I've diluted the five drops as I mentioned at the start in a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water. So stirring the milk whilst we're pouring in the colouring. This just gives the cheese a, a richer colour on the final product. And most cheddars these days do use annatto colouring. especially the commercial ones. So we don't need the thermometer at the moment. And we just have to now add the uh, liquid rennet that's been diluted. So there it is. So that's liquid uh, vegetable rennet that I'm using there. And that was a teaspoon of rennet that has been diluted. Okay, we stir for about a minute. And now we're going to let that rest for 40 minutes to do its magic to turn into curds and whey. Well, the 40 minutes are up and we're going to do what's known as a clean break. I'm going to put my finger in the curds and hopefully it splits, yep, just like that. So it's not milk anymore. Now just one final test. I'm going to get the curd knife and I'm going to just see if I can cut. Yes, that's perfect. So 
So I'm going to get out my uh, cheese cutter or curd cutter or curd half as it's also known and we're just going to make the horizontal cuts a lot easier if you do have one of these um, they are available on the net uh, this one was made for me by a friend in Canada David who you might have heard a podcast of if you've listened to the little green cheese podcast now the curd's quite solid so it's getting a bit stuck there so I'm going to have to stop there and revert back to the good old curd knife again. So we're looking for one centimetre cubes or three quarters of an inch, uh, sorry, three eighths of an inch. So it's one centimetre cubes. This does take a little while, but it's worthwhile seeing the whole process. Now remember that the horizontal um, cuts have already been made, so these are just the vertical ones. So we cut one way and then we're going to cut in the other direction vertically to make the cubes. So try and keep the lines evenly spaced saves a lot of mucking around later on when you come across big cubes as you're stirring. Just to make sure that that's the curd cutter has done its job, I'm just doing some diagonal cuts there because I believe that there are some rather large cubes in there still, as I couldn't get the curd cutter all the way around. So just diagonal cuts there. That's how you do the um, the horizontal cuts when you don't have a curd cutter. You can see that there is some whey starting to expel already, which is a good sign you've got a nice firm curd. So we're going to let that sit. So the curds are going to knit together for five minutes, and then you can start stirring. So we're going to raise the temperature of the curd now up to 39 degrees Celsius, or 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this takes 40 minutes so you're doing it over a 40 minute period so you're not rushing like a bull at a gate you're slowly heating your curds and whey up to the 39 degrees and it did indeed take me about 38 minutes when I did it um, but I kept stirring when I reached the target temperature so once you've reached the target temperature oh who's that cheeky bugger there he is that's uh, how I've got my video set up. You can see I've got a pot on top of a pot. That's how I keep the, um, the curds hot. Okay, so it looks like we've reached the target temperature of 39 degrees there. That's over the period of 40 minutes. And you can see that the curds and whey, sorry, the curds have shrunk a fair bit. A lot of whey expelled there now. And you can expect that after stirring and raising the temperature at the same time. So, yep, our finger indicates that we've reached the target temperature. Now we're going to stir for an additional 30 minutes now. This is where your arm gets a little bit sore, but there's no way around it. Especially for the home cheese maker, you just have to stir the pot. And there we go, we've stirred it for the 30 minutes. And you can see that the curds have shrunk even more. And they're probably about half the size they were when we cut them. So we're just going to take that off the uh, double boiler. So I'll just move that aside. We don't need that at the moment. 
And you can see in the background there, I've got a small pot. I've got six cups of tap water that has been drawn. That's at 16 degrees Celsius, so that's about 1.5 litres. So there's the setup there, that's 16 degrees Celsius. And it doesn't have to be in a pot, it can be in a container, it's just what I had available. And the two pots. So I'm going to actually drain off the whey down to the level of the curds now with a sterilised cup. So I just drain that. And I'm going to keep whey because we're going to use it for cooking um, and maybe make a little bit of ricotta later on. So as you can see, I'm down to the level of the curds now. It's a fair bit of whey there that I've uh, drained off. And just gently taking out the last cup of whey. So that additional water, as I mentioned, was at 16 degrees Celsius, which is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to start to add that to the curd mass now. So it looks a bit like scrambled eggs, which is just what it's supposed to look like at this stage. And we're going to take our cup and we're going to put in the cold water. We're trying to get the temperature down to between about 27 and 30 Celsius, which is about 80 Fahrenheit. So we're trying to get the temperature. So as we add the cooler water, it cools the curd down. We give that a little bit of a stir. And there we are, that's the last cup there. Now I actually did pour the whole 1.5 litres or 6 cups into the curd. And there we go, we stir that now. And just make sure that it's cooled down. Yeah, the temperature has dropped, which is good. That's what we're after. So that actually, adding that fresh water, uh, lowers the acidity of the final curd. So we're going to stir now for 15 more minutes. And thankfully, this is the last time we're stirring. And we've stirred for 15 now. And we're just going to let that rest for about a minute or two. Just let them all drop down to the bottom. That's the size of them. You can see they've probably shrunk by about three quarters. Now we're going to drain the curd just in a uh, colander lined with a sterilised cheesecloth. Just pour that in. Now you can't keep this way because it's diluted with water. Um, you've got all that other way in the other pot, so that's okay. It's no great loss. So just with your clean hand, just get all that out. Don't want to waste any at all. Right, we're going to let that drain for 20 minutes now. So 20 minutes has elapsed and we're going to take the curd mass because it's one big single lump now. And we're going to put that back in our pot. And we're going to mill the cheese into six millimeter, or that's about a quarter of an inch pieces by hand. You can see there's a little bit of whey dripping there. It's not too bad. Most of it's gone, thank goodness. So we'll throw that into the into the stock pot. Oh, there we are from another angle. And I'm going to um, break up the curds now into the smaller particles again. So milling's pretty easy, you just break it up with your clean hands. I have sprayed my hands there with uh, white vinegar and that prevents any moulds from infecting the, the cheese. Obviously wash them with soap first of course. There we go, 
and there's the final bit of the curve just make sure all milled wonderful now we're going to add the cheese salt so there's two tablespoons of coarse cheese salt. This is non-iodized salt. If you use iodized salt, it will kill the culture and it will not develop the flavor you're after. So now that we've added the cheese salt, we're just going to mix that in thoroughly. Mix it very well. You want the salt distributed evenly through the curds. Okay, now we're going to fill up the cheesecloth lined mold. Pretty simple operation, just put your hand and get the curd and pop it in and then press it down at the end. So this first pressing is, we're just going to put the uh, large piece of the cheese cloth and we're just going to fold that over the top and we're going to put on the plastic follower so we get a flat surface on the top of the cheese. There we go. Give it a bit of a press so it fits in okay. Put it into our trusty cheese press and we're going to press for 20 minutes. Oh sorry, 20 pounds uh, which is about 11 kilos um, and we're going to press for 30 minutes this first time around. So that's between 10 and 11 kilos for 30 minutes. Now I've got a little spring, I've just got to uh, estimate there. It's about halfway down, halfway closed. That's how I figure out that it's at the 20 pounds or about. 10 to 11 kilos. Right, so that 30 minutes has elapsed. We're just going to unwrap this. you will to be very gentle this time round because it's only just formed into the wheel of cheese. It's very loose. Just going to be gentle. So no rough handedness. So gently unwrap that there. You see there's a bit of loose stuff on the top. Just going to make sure you don't lose that. So just spread out your cheesecloth and then gently pick it up. Just separate it from the cheesecloth there. It didn't look like it was going to come off. Oh, there we go. So I'm just supporting the cheese with the palm of my hand. Spread that out and then we're going to gently turn it over. All the loose stuff just fall off everywhere. There, there we go. Okay, just get that in the center of the cheesecloth. And we're going to rewrap that up now. And we're going to press this time at 20 pounds again, between 10 and 11 kilos, for another 30 minutes. So fold the biggest edge over again to flat surface, pop the follower on top again, give it a good press down and pop it in the cheese press. And as I said this time round, 20 pounds or between 10 and 11 kilos. So I'm closing the spring halfway and that's for 30 minutes. Yeah, 
here, so I'm trying to clean up. Still being messy. Lovely. Okay, so the 30 minutes has elapsed. So I'm just going to pop this out. Don't have to be as careful this time because um, it has formed up fairly well. There we go. Pop it back in. So this time we're pressing for at 40 pounds, which is uh, just shy of, it's about 15 kilos, maybe 16. And we're doing it for an hour. Okay, the time has elapsed. I've got to be quick here. Um, and uh, we're just taking out for its final pressing. We're just going to flip that over. This time it's at 50 pounds or 22 and a half or 23 kilos. And that's going to be for 12 hours. So this is an overnight job. So I finished uh, uh, wrapping all this up at about uh, 8 p.m. And uh, then just set my timer. And uh, the next morning, I uh, turned it out. Pressing, pressing that down to the full extent of the spring in this case it's a 50 pound spring so we're trying to close it all the way up give it as maximum pressure to get the cheese to form properly here we go that's as tight as we can get it cool so back in 12 hours Okay, I pulled it out the next morning and this is what it looked like. Lovely yellow colour. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it on a sushi mat like that. And we're going to let air dry for a day or two. It's pretty dry already, but uh, it probably will take a day or two at room temperature. And room temperature about 21 degrees Celsius. So then once it's air dried, we are going to wax it like this. Now I do have a uh, waxing video on YouTube as well. So look that up. How to wax a cheese. Uh, and we're going to store that now uh, for two and a half months at 13 degrees Celsius, around about 80% um, percent humidity in our cheese cave. And then at the two and a half month mark, we open it up, cut it open like this, and it looks wonderful. And I tell you what, it does taste fantastic. This cheese really surprised me uh, when I made it for the first time. It was delicious. Anyway, that's all we've got time for, Curd Nerds. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you at the next video.